Well, the amazing thing about these models is that they are so intricate and to imagine that they put these together from glass and adhesives is, is quite an amazing thing. I just think it's amazing that they can make animals like that. The Blaschka models were created by Leopold and Rudolf Blaschka, a father and son team, who made marine invertebrate animals out of glass. Blaschkas had various influences on their work. I mean, they could either have seen the animals themselves, things like the jellyfishes, um, they would have seen in real life. Uh, but they also had, as with Ernst Heckel, they had correspondences with various scientists, and they may have suggested to them to start to make various types of, of models. So about 10 years or so, these were stored in cardboard boxes, so they were completely hidden from display, no one ever saw them. And, and they were so delicate that we only really dared open the lids of the boxes to see what was inside. On my far right, you can see um, some of the original models that Leopold Blaschke made before his son um, joined him in the 1860s. We've got sea anemones here. And um, what's particularly interesting is if you look at these, these animals in real life, they do have these colours, but under um, preservation in um, museum collections such as ours, that preserved in alcohol or formalin, they, they lose their colour. We've got a beautiful um, Portuguese man of war jellyfish here, um, and you can see all the, the blue tentacles here and the bell at the top. And then we've got an example of um, a moon jellyfish in the centre here. And um, if you are looking at this jellyfish from above, you can actually see the internal structures here. And that again was the, the beauty of the models that they made. You could often see through the glass to internal structures, whereas with a, a real specimen, you'd have to look under the microscope and you'd have to dissect it. The Blaschka glass models that we see here are uh, radiolarians reproduced based on a monograph um, by a famous scientist called Ernst Haeckel, and that was published in 1862. It was one of the first examples of evolutionary theory being used to describe or to explain the distribution of organisms. Radiolarians are single-celled animals and they secrete a small shell or test of silica, so it's rather appropriate that the Blaschkas should decide to model them in glass. Radiolarians in real life are microscopic you can see this slide here has an arrangement of tiny specimens all put together into a star shape. Um, so they're much less than a millimetre in size and usually you'd need a microscope to see them. Some of the models uh, that we keep on our collection have uh, a lot of fractures and they have the natural resins uh, degrading. So uh, we are bringing them into the conservation unit uh, to establish their condition, their current state, and also try to address um, any, uh, any long-term problems. These models are fairly fragile and there is a huge amount of internal information which you can't gain just by visually inspecting it. The conservation unit asked us to scan these in our um, micro CT system. The biggest advantage is it's, it's non-destructive, it's very little sample preparation. So for, uh, for our museum and for our collections, that's, that's our biggest advantage. We don't want to damage any of our collections. We also want to limit how much we physically handle them. And so gaining the 3D data allows us to then explore those collections in, in a way that we wouldn't have been able to do, say, 20 years ago. 
thinking that that is glass to be very because it looks like it's blown if i if i can just show you this here there's also information on the repairs that may have taken place or if repairs need to take place where they should be done and how they could possibly be carried out It's really great that they're going on display. The public, I think, would enjoy seeing more of them. They are exceptionally pretty, they're, they're beautiful. The way that they show the anatomy of animals, and in particular here, these radiolarians, it's something that's very difficult to show when you're talking about something which is less than a millimetre in size. It's really wonderful that from making just sea anemones, started a huge business for the for the Blaschkas. Little did they know that, um, you know, over a hundred years on, that they would become such treasures in the museum's collections.